Hey crafters, I'm Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take this little acrylic blank and turn it into a beautiful sparkly masterpiece with glitter and epoxy. So make sure you stay tuned to check that out. I'm so excited to show you guys more about this. If you've never worked with acrylic blanks before, I will link my other video that has like the basics of acrylic blanks and how to use vinyl with them right here in the YouTube card and in the description below. If you're not comfortable with working with epoxy, this is a great starter project before you get to things like tumblers and stuff like that because it doesn't require any moving. You're just gonna set it flat on a table until it dries. Before we get started with epoxy, as always, just make sure that you're very cautious and careful when working with chemicals like epoxy. Make sure that you wear gloves and that you keep it out of the way so that no children or pets can reach the epoxy as it's drying. With all that out of the way, let's get started. First, I'm gonna protect my surface and myself by putting on gloves and adding some packing paper to my table so that I don't get epoxy everywhere. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up my epoxy and then I'll prepare my acrylic while I give my epoxy some time to get well mixed. I am using Pro Marine Epoxy, that's my favorite type of epoxy to use. If you are a complete beginner to epoxy, I recommend starting with Alumalite because it's a little bit easier to handle and I just think it doesn't, um, doesn't require as much skill and know-how. You can get Alumalite and Pro Marine on Amazon. I will link those below for you so that you can purchase them um, if you like. So I use a medicine cup to measure my epoxy. That's the easiest way for me, so that's what I like to do. And I'm gonna mix, I always tend to mix a little bit more than what I think I'm gonna need. So I think that I am going to mix five milliliters of epoxy. So I'm gonna start with part A. And I am gonna fill part A to the two and a half milliliter line on my medicine cup. Sorry, you guys can't see that very well, but you'll just have to trust me. I may have to wait for that to settle a little bit. Part A is the thicker part, so sometimes it takes a little bit longer to settle in. We are super close. The key to epoxy is that you wanna mix it in a one-to-one -one ratio. So you want it to be as close to even in part A and part B as you can. That's why I like to use a medicine cup. You can also get these super cheap on Amazon too. So that's enough of part A, so now I'm gonna use part B. And by the way, they don't come in these little bottles like this. I bought, these are just condiment bottles that I bought for 98 cents a piece at Walmart because they are smaller and a little bit easier to handle than some of the bigger bottles because I had trouble mixing smaller amounts because the bottles were so big, I like didn't feel like I had good control when I was dumping it into my medicine cup. So I bought these and that makes your life so much easier. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna lay it on the table and make sure that I'm at five milliliters. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Um, I lay it on the table sometimes in case I'm not holding it level because the table is a lot more level than the way that I hold it. So the next step is to use a um, silicone stir stick. That's my favorite because when it gets glitter and epoxy on it, um, silicone doesn't Epoxy doesn't stick to silicone, so you can just peel it right off. Um, but if you don't have this, you could definitely just use a popsicle stick. A metal like cocktail stir stick works, so there's lots of good ways to do this. So I'm just gonna mix this up, and initially it's gonna look pretty cloudy. Um, that's the way that all epoxy starts, and then it's going to get really cloudy. And after mixing it for a few minutes, it's gonna get a lot more clear and have some bubbles in it. So once it reaches that clear point, I will set it aside and I'll work on preparing our acrylic. I always like to give my epoxy like maybe five minutes, sometimes 10, to kind of, 
I don't know, continue mixing together and um, everything before I apply it. Promarine has a really strong smell, so if you are a person that has that struggles with like migraines and things like that, you may not want to use Promarine because it can um, it triggers like reactions in some people. It doesn't happen too with me. I never noticed a smell with Alumalite, so I never struggled with that. But um, I know several people that struggle with the smell of Promarine. Okay. We're looking pretty good there. It's a lot more clear than it was before. There are still some air bubbles and things like that in there, but that's okay. They, a lot of times, will work themselves out. Plus, um, I work upstairs in my house, and so this is a warmer room than usual. Epoxy likes it warm, so you definitely don't want to be in a room that's like probably less than like, I don't know, 66, 67 degrees. It usually stays 72 degrees up here. The warmer your room is, the better your epoxy is going to do. So while I set my um, epoxy aside, I'm going to go ahead and remove the um, protective coating of my acrylic. And like I said, if you guys have never worked with acrylics before, I have another video on those um, that I did with kind of all the basic processes that you need um, for working with acrylics and adding vinyl to them. I will link that in the video description if you're interested in seeing more about that. So the, the only vinyl that I'm putting on this is like this cute little sleeve that I created. Um, I created these a while ago and I just think it looks like, it looks cute when it looks more like a real latte cup. I just used the SVG from um, 651vinyl.com and I sliced a rectangle out of it and then I sliced these little hearts into it to kind of make it look like a little latte sleeve. So that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to apply that to the front and then I will put my epoxy on the back. In theory, you could put your epoxy on the front as well. It just depends on your design and what you're trying to do. So I'm just laying it on top of the transfer tape so I can transfer my design over. Okay. Since this design has some small parts, I'm gonna use my squeegee and burnish it down really well so that nothing gets left behind on the transfer tape. Then I'm just gonna lay it over my acrylic and I'm gonna get these sides to match up with the acrylic the best I can before I stick it on. After the glitter is, um, the glitter and the epoxy are dry, I think it'll give it some cute background. Sometimes the shape gets a little bit lost with all the glitter and epoxy. So adding a little bit of vinyl first is a fun way to um, make it stand out really well. So there we go. Now we've got a cute little uh, latte sleeve for our If you learned something in this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe below, and share it with all your friends so they can make their own glitter keychain masterpiece. All right, now that we've given our epoxy a little bit of time, it's time to add some glitter. There are two different ways that you can add glitter to your acrylic. And the first way is to put down a layer of Mod Podge, add some glitter, and then after that dries, you can add another layer of Mod Podge to seal it. I've done that before and it works okay. Um, you can still feel the texture of the glitter. What I like about using epoxy with glitter is that once it is dry, you won't be able to feel the texture of the glitter on the acrylic anymore. Uh, but if you're not comfortable with using epoxy, you can definitely use Mod Podge and glitter to do this. I'm actually gonna mix my glitter straight into my epoxy because, I know that because I'm gonna be using the whole, um, I'm gonna make the whole cup the same color. If you are trying to do glitter in multiple sections to make different colors on this acrylic, you would definitely wanna use Mod Podge and glitter with each section first. Then you can always seal your Mod Podge and glitter with epoxy instead of a second layer of Mod Podge if you choose as well. So there's lots of different ways to do this. You really can just do whatever works for you. One thing that I like to do is to lay a little um, portion cup down. These are little two ounce portion cups that you can get at the grocery store or at Walmart. 
but I like to flip these over and lay my acrylic on them when I'm painting my epoxy on because I think it makes it easier if it's elevated. Plus, if some of the epoxy um, drips off the side, this is going to help it because the epoxy can just drip onto the paper instead of creating little pools to the side of your acrylic that you'll have to cut off with an X-Acto knife. So I'm gonna start by adding a teeny tiny bit of glitter to this. Um, this is this glitter is called Oceanside. I got this from a local vinyl shop, so I don't have any recommendations on where you can find it. It's a blue and green holograph holographic glitter that is gonna look really pretty on this. And I don't have an exact measure for you on how much glitter you're gonna need to use, but the, the spot that you're trying to get is that you wanna add enough glitter to your epoxy where your epoxy still flows as normal. It's gonna thicken a little tiny bit, but if you get it to the point where your epoxy feels sticky and you feel like it's lost some of its original texture, then you've probably added too much glitter. So we're gonna go nice and slow and add a little bit at a time and mix it in. But you can also choose to only put a little bit of glitter in your epoxy and still have some of the clear and the acrylic show through. So there's lots of different ways to do this. It really is difficult to go wrong. And if you do add too much glitter to your epoxy, you can always mix up more epoxy and add that to it. So you don't have to let it all go to waste. So I want more of a glitter coverage than what this is um, offering with this much glitter. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to my epoxy. I would say I'm maybe adding like a quarter of a teaspoon at a time. So it's still mixing really, really nicely. And it's getting a little bit thicker, but this is not as um, full coverage of a glitter as some others. And I want my latte cup to be pretty full coverage. So I'm just gonna keep on going. So as you can see, it's getting a bit thicker but I think we still have a little ways to go. That's looking a lot better. Another way that you can tell what the coverage of your glitter and epoxy is gonna look like is if you bring some up on your star stick see how much color of your stir stick is coming through. It works really well with like wide popsicle sticks because you can see exactly what it's gonna look like when it's painted onto your acrylic. All right, we're reaching the point where I don't think I can mix any more in because I'm going to make my epoxy too sticky. So that's about where I want it to be. So I'm gonna put my glitter aside, and I'm gonna show you guys my best hack for putting um, epoxy on acrylics. These are my favorite paint brushes. This is what I'm gonna use to paint the epoxy onto the, um, onto the acrylic. And I really like it because it gives me a lot of good control. And I bought a pack of, let's see, 30 paint brushes from Walmart for about 288. So these are what I use to, um, add my epoxy onto my acrylic blanks. And this also helps because the, one of the important keys about putting epoxy on your acrylics is you wanna try to not seal up the hole for the hardware because otherwise you're gonna have to drill through it. So what I like to do is dab a little bit of epoxy onto my acrylic blank in that area and just use more of a dabbing motion than a painting motion so that I can kind of coat the area and then you can add more epoxy later and kind of thicken it up. But you wanna start slow. You can always add more, but you can't take any away. I have to make an adjustment here. So I can see right now that my cup is not level, so it's not gonna let my epoxy dry correctly. So I'm gonna peel back a layer of my paper here so that I make sure that my epoxy dries level. Because that's the key, epoxy is self-leveling. So it will do a lot of the leveling work for you, but you do have to make sure that it's level in the first place. All right, so we may paint it on here, and in the end I may have to move it just onto the plane table. But now it's on less layers and it's looking a little better. All right, so I'm gonna go back to dabbing epoxy around the hardware hole. 
You can also do this around the edges. Now if some drips off, it's really not the end of the world. Um, you can always cut or you can get the epoxy off there with an X-Acto knife, but you wanna make sure that you're really careful. So if you can help it and you don't have to do that, I think that that's the best way to go. So I'm just really carefully dabbing. And then kind of once you get epoxy where you want it, um, it will do the rest of the job while it's leveling. So you don't always have to get it 100% perfect. You just need to spread it to all the right areas and then let the epoxy do its thing. Another thing that I've seen a lot of people do is prop up their acrylics on um, solo on the upside down solo cups. So that works as well. There's lots of great ways to do this. So as I get into new areas with epoxy, I'm just going to dab down the sides to encourage the epoxy to not go over the edge. And if it does, no big deal, I'll clean it up. But if I can prevent that from happening in the first place, I definitely want to. In case you can't tell, I'm a bit of an OCD crafter. <laughs> I try to be as neat as I can, but sometimes things go wrong and we just fix them. No big deal. Now you do want to get really close um, when you're looking at your acrylic because you do want to make sure that you do take the epoxy all the way to the edge. If you don't, you may miss a spot and there might be, like the edges might seem a little bit bumpy if you don't coax the epoxy all the way to the edge. All right, and now my um, epoxy is pretty much fully covered on my acrylic. But one thing that works really well is if you kind of, if you scoot back and you look at your epoxy from the side, if you have bright light in your room, you'll be able to see the areas where the epoxy is puckering a little bit. And you can, you can dab with your brush in those areas and make sure that you get full coverage. I always like to have a lot of bright lights um, near me with epoxy because looking at it from the side is a great strategy for making sure that you're going to have a nice, smooth, glassy surface. This also works a lot better with fine glitter. I've done the same project with chunky glitter. And even though it works, you might end up having to do a second coat of epoxy because epoxy sometimes, for whatever reason, rejects the chunky glitter a little bit more. And so you may end up having to do a second coat. But if you're okay with that, do it because it is super super cute if you had any epoxy spill over the sides of your acrylic while it was drying you can take some sandpaper to the side and sand it off or you can very carefully trim along the edges of your acrylic with an exacto knife but be careful not to cut your finger and just a few hours later our glitter epoxy keychain is complete make sure that you add your hardware and any dangles tassels anything like that that you're going to add to it and your project is complete I'm Alex Vanover, and if you want more Cricut project tips, ideas, and inspiration, make sure that you subscribe below and ring the bell next to subscribe so that you never miss a new video, a live video, and see what I have going on next. You can check back in my craft room every week for my latest video and project idea. Let's craft again soon.